What's up, guys? Vince Ruddy here. I have a lot to talk about and a lot to address. And also, I haven't did a Vince talk in, God, it feels like weeks. I did my first Vince talk like a few weeks ago, but now here he is, you know, still in January. And man, it's almost, it's January is almost over. Time is just <laughs> moving fast. My goodness. But um, yeah, welcome to Vince Talk, where I address the news, where I talk about how I'm doing and it's a rambling series that I just really want to talk to you guys. And also, if anything important, like I just share stuff that I feel like it's worth sharing. And I record it all here uh, on this, you know, on my phone and just talk to you. And pretty much as if I'm really, you know, calling someone. This is just like, you know, me, con you know, doing conversations or at least practicing conversations because I did the podcast with Stefan and man, I need to practice. I noticed that. And listen. I did a podcast. There was a podcast like, you know, and this counts as a podcast, me doing it alone. Um, there was a podcast I did with Stefan and pretty much we did the podcast together on my birthday and it wasn't good. It wasn't good because and most of it was my fault because a lot of times I, I basically was just talking just nonstop and, and I did not give Stefan a chance and I noticed because especially when I, you know, surprised him about me hitting 10,000 subscribers, no reaction, no reaction from Stefan. Now, was it his fault? No, I would. No, it wasn't because most of it was just me rushing into it because especially we were at the parking lot and we were trying to do a podcast very quick. And there's a lot of things to talk about as well. I did not have the time to actually give him a chance, especially how I'm, I never really did a podcast with anyone. Stefan is the only one that I ever do a podcast. I really want to change that. I really want to communicate with other people and also have them involved within my podcast and my videos and collab, like interviews. I remember that SL, a person that I look up to, really wanted to do an interview. And that's something that I really want to do. But man, from the looks of it, let me tell you, my anxiety itself plays into that, that the fact that I don't do podcasts with anyone. But it's the fact that, you know, I'm, you know, I, I just don't have that habit in me to actually find people to actually do it. And especially on Zoom, a lot of people are, you know, especially how, you know, everything is like out there and, you know, things are opening. People don't use Zoom much. I mean, some people do. Some people do, especially in businesses. But I am not built that way where, you know, especially my, my, my parents, they use Zoom as a business. But I don't. And I'm supposed to. And I'm supposed to actually talk to, you know, different people and stuff like that. We, we, you know, th that's the fun thing. And pretty much I want that to happen. But I'm so used to actually talking to myself and actually talking a lot, like a lot, a lot, especially through my reads, that it, it's like, you know, easy to run my mouth to not know that, oh, wait, shoot, I forgot to have another person. I think my mom actually uh, talked to me about this. And yeah, I know that's going to change. And pretty much I slowly and slowly, I try to find myself really going into that because there's literally nobody to actually criticize or actually, I mean, I don't know if you guys watch the podcast because I know for a fact that maybe some of you, but you don't, you don't comment, which, Hey, that makes sense because the podcast don't get a lot of views. But a lot of times I just wish that there was somebody to actually criticize. The thing is, is that when it comes down to my videos and what I do, I want some critique. I want people to, to actually have some critique on what I do with my videos, you know, especially when it comes down to the titles. Sometimes I screw up the, the title of the videos of some of these reads. And when some, some of you just don't really correct me, some of you just laughed it off. I remember there would be comments like, LOL, look at this funny title. But none of you said like, oh, Vince, there, something's wrong with your title. I wish I had that. And I get it. Some of you, yes, it's not your job to do that. But at the same time, it would be nice to actually have some people to actually be like, Vince, you, you kind of messed this up. Like, can you fix this? You know, that would be nice. But again, I'm a, I'm a small creator, so I don't really have that kind of audience, you know, when it comes down to correct me, especially like how I, you know, most of my audience is mostly teenagers and stuff like that. So, yeah, it makes sense that, you know, I, you know, you know, wouldn't actually get that criticism, but it would be nice if I do, if, you know, especially if some people like not knowing if there's sound. I remember I had a video with no sound. None of you guys actually corrected. None, there was literally nobody 
that was like, uh, Vince, something's wrong with the audio. And I think this was like during when I had like 3K. I mean, it could change if I upload a video with no sound. I guarantee you there could be some people like, uh, Vince, something's wrong with your video. Stuff like that. Then again, I'm not blaming anyone here. I'm not blaming Stefan or anything. You know, I... I, I get it, you know, and I pretty much don't like the idea or somebody saying like, oh, you're a grown man. You're supposed to do this yourself. You, you, you know that. Listen, I do this whole channel. This whole channel thing is all by myself. But a lot of times I'm focusing on real life things, you know what I mean? But yeah, that that's something I kind of want to work on. There's a lot of things to work on, okay? You know, especially how um, it, I'm working on actually just, just figuring out like, you know, how to be a better podcaster, an interviewer. That's something that is going to definitely in some ways be the main feast of this channel because i i really hope that i get big you know creators and collab with them and just chat it up just talk you know and i truly feel like that i can do that i did that in the hip-hop culture where actually i talked to a couple of guys and we were all friends all of a sudden during that small moment I did that in these hip-hop events that I went to in my second channel. So why not if I can actually, you know, really immerse that energy into this channel? It's an experiment that I really want to really go into. And I guarantee you once I move soon, because uh, that's another update I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put out there. I'm going to be moving soon. So, you know, that's when I do move soon, I'm definitely going to have mad collabs, mad collaborations. And, you know, it's mostly going to be involving the Vince Talk brand, the Vince Talk podcast. That is something that I really want to do. That's something I really want to do. And also what I, that I, you know, really want to actually put in, 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 my, in my content for sure, because I really do love talking and chatting. And I, I feel like my personality itself, how I'm really practicing, you know, being funny or practicing to actually communicate and practicing and, you know, even actually, you know, the classes that I'm taking right now actually helps me get through that, which is also a second update. You know, my classes are starting, so that's just freaking great. But I'm not supposed to be in class. The thing is, what sucks is that all my classes are online. So my source of actually communicating with people is either like the clubs I go to or not. And I'm not talking about like drinky, drink, drink club. Ooh, we partying. No, like I have a small group that I actually attend you for, for uh, my church. But also, the you know, just like especially that's that's a, that's the source in also hanging out with friends that I have left. And my third being podcasting collaboration, working with people, because I especially spoke with Webtoon to actually do something like that in the future. And I'm going to be, and there's going to be a big announcement soon. I just need some information first uh, when I get to it, working with Webtoon. Hopefully, I'm going to be doing big stuff with Webtoon, especially when it, it, even when it comes down to the, the people I'm working with, which is something I'm looking forward to. Here's the challenge for this particular uh, you know, year, you know, I spoke with this with Stefan, but then again, like I said, the podcast is just privated because it wasn't good. <laughs> and most of it was my fault, but I, I said this and I, I, I don't know if I did. And I kind of like went all over the place with it. You know, that's how, you know, it's not a really good po podcast because I really couldn't get to my point, uh, correctly, but I really want to actually have what I do, uh, the opportunity of what I do to carry me of when it comes down to making videos, when it comes down to making something, I want that to be something that can lift me to the opportunities. I know there's opportunities out there and I'm willing to work for them. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, tr I'm going to work hard for this channel to actually make more content, to double the uploads, double the, you know, opportunities, double your requests, double the subscribers. And I'm going to make it bigger and bigger because I know that when, you know, I don't want to actually, I want to be successful before I reach 30. There, I said, it, okay, that's what I want to do. It's my age. And pretty much ever since my birthday came, I'm like, damn, 30s are coming in quick, even though I'm 26. But, you know, that's something that I'm trying to work on, you know, and I'm actually just really trying to advance and really pulling in. But, you know, again, I'm putting in the work and it's good because I'm actually doing more work than freaking talking about it, you know, because that should be, because a lot of times, you know, my stuff on, you know, my boy Stefan is actually struggling to actually, he talks about it, but, you know, he doesn't have like an adapt plan to actually really uh, adapt to like what he wants to do. But he even took a break for actually um, to break from college to actually work on something that he wants to do. We both have the same goal. And we're trying our hardest to actually, you know, 
achieve something. But, you know, of course, I'm talking about, you know, something in my lane, something that you guys and I want to carry you guys throughout my journey as a content creator, as a future ambassador, and also like something that would be beneficial for this channel for exclusive content in this channel, and hopefully something soon for my dream projects that I really want. And also my dreams because I have ideas that are very exclusive because I don't want anyone to steal them. There are the these are ideas that Webtoon would be like, yo, this will be cool. You know, stuff like that. There's a lot of excitement, as you can tell. But other than that, yeah, let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of this particular, even though that felt like the meat and potatoes. But let's get into the beef of this whole entire conversation and let's talk. So uh, I don't know if you see in the title. I don't know if, you know, if this is a surprise. Maybe it is. But listen, I don't really cuss at my channel. And I remember some people were asking like, oh, Vince, why you don't cuss and stuff? Here, let me tell you. Okay. I want to be honest. I do cuss. It's just that I cuss when I'm mad. Me cussing is never a good thing. It is never a good thing if I cuss. It means I'm mad. It means I'm angry. It means I'm depressed. There's a lot of negativity, and I want to keep that off my channel. Okay? I want to keep that off my channel. Plus, I don't want to get age-restricted and get demonetized. But that happened to me with YouTube age restricting one of my let's reads of down to earth. And it was a private video. Why did they, you know, age restrict it? I don't know. Why? Why did they age restrict a whole bunch of videos? Why did all of these channels got age restricted? Why is, you know, YouTube being strict with its rules? Why is this? It looks like I got a piece of it. And let me tell you, I was mad because literally it didn't explain nothing. It didn't make sense. Like, I think it was like a certain word I said there, but I cut it out. It was a cuss word, but I cut it because, again, I don't cuss. I somewhat like give you like a cut of the cuss word. I'll say it like you, oh, and that's it. That's it. I just stop it right there. And it this doesn't make sense. Why did I get it restricted? I don't know. But I did. It just happened. Out of nowhere, knowing that, you know, it, yeah, it, it is, was meant to, you know, it was going to happen. But here's the weird thing is that I have like videos of boyfriends where you have like, you know, and, you know, of course I miss boyfriends. Let me tell you, I miss it, especially at this point. But, you know, one of my boyfriend reads had some, you know, certain material where it's kind of looty, you know what I mean? And YouTube didn't age restrict it. But out of nowhere, it just had to be a video, a private video video that they age restrict that is insane the, how did they ever like age restrict a video that is literally that they can't see I, it's private it's straight up robotic i just know it's automatic i know it's a freaking bot that you and it is it might as well be because you know why that's youtube that's youtube youtube's too big i get it i get it i get it but man, does it make... Listen, I felt the anger. We're talking about people like Jacksepticeye and PewDiePie that talked about the same issue and they're mad about it. I feel that. I feel that for sure. For big creators and small creators like me. And I'm a small creator. I'm an easy target for YouTube. YouTube many times man strike me and I will never forgive them. And today I still would actually cuss out on YouTube if I would. But I can't because YouTube, again, would actually have me, you know, break the community guidelines. And I don't want that. I'm not trying to break the rules. I'm not trying to get on their bad side. But at the same time, it doesn't mean I should like YouTube. It's like, a you know, a friend of me kind of thing with YouTube at this point. Yeah, thank you, YouTube. But at the same time, you're still a, you know what? Yeah, you're still a, that's what you are, YouTube. You're still a, you know? You're st yeah, take that. But that's the best I can really say it. it then again, I, you know, re-uploaded the video and then get age restricted at, you know, as I'm recording, it could, I don't know, it could. And YouTube could pull something on me, like, you know, a bunch of my videos and I'm not ready for that. I'm not, listen, anything bad on my YouTube channel, I'm not ready for it. If it's gone, it's gone. The only chances of it actually ever being redeemed and actually the reason why that my channel, like you're seeing my channel right now and it hasn't been fully terminated like it did a few months ago, if anybody remembers, because that was a scary, you know, event that happened. It, it's because that Webtoon has my back and I gave them every inch of love that, you know, and that's why I'm willing to work hard for them and, you know, ride for them. But man, you got YouTube and that's a different beast you have to actually battle. So... Yeah, I have to deal with that. It is what it is. Then again, you know what? I'm not even going to, you know, be mad about spilt milk at the same time, you know? Other than that, 
let's get into some news and stuff like that. Uh, I heard TikTok is getting banned. Like, when did, is it never? I feel like TikTok is still going. No one's worried about it. So be it being banned might as well... Like, I don't know. If it happens, I don't know what's really going to happen to the creators. Because I don't... Listen, I was really planning to actually go back to TikTok and making fun videos and stuff like that in there. But, um... Yeah, there's no point of it. Plus, I was trying to find ways to actually do like a VTuber avatar because I don't like showing my face and I don't have my freaking Jabba Walkies mask because that's in my other house that I left. So, yeah, I don't I don't really know what to do on TikTok. I want to do something, but uh, what is it? I don't know. Um, another thing, like, you know, for TikTok itself to be banned, like, you know, is that going to happen or not? We, we're just going to find out, you know, soon probably um also uh you know me i like talking about the future i like talking about certain things that are big structures and mega structures and stuff like that so everybody can get into the science of actually talking about this news at least i tried to attempt to and it is a building or well, not building it's a bunch of buildings it's a city it's a future city and it's called telosa and it's something that i've seen in super mega projects people were talking about it. so far it's a lot of positivity i guess but at the same time you know, even though this looks nice because it says like, it, oh, it's a safe diversity city of diversity, diver like freaking diversity seems to be a freaking magic word. I swear. Listen, it being diver safe and diverse. Yeah, we get it. What is that supposed to mean, by the way? What's that supposed to mean? You're in freaking America. By the way, this is in Tolosa. This is somewhere in Arizona that's going to be built in the freaking desert. I don't know what's up with, you know, certain mega projects being built in the desert. Like Saudi Arabia is doing the same thing when it comes down to the line, which I talked about last time of another Vince talk where they're going to build a freaking line where it's like this tall structure in the middle of the desert. And it costs like, what, 40, 50 billion, something like that to build it. Because of how big and structure and to make it futuristic and it's we could Saudi Arabia. Like just look at the Burj Khalifa, you know, why is it there? Yeah, they're gonna actually adapt all that energy when they made the Burj Khalifa into making the freaking line, which is like this wall-to-wall -wall city. Now, I wouldn't say that this is the same thing here in America. 40, 50 billion, especially in during inflation, like come on, that's insane. Now, I don't know what's the future of it, but that's insane. And saying certain small stuff like like, you know, especially how it's built in the desert. You got to give me more than that other than saying, oh, diversity, diversity. And listen, I'm all about diversity, especially when it comes down to diversity of anybody watching my channel. I don't care who you are. Then again, I wouldn't know who you are because if you show love, then you show love. The only thing I don't really count you as diversity if you're it, as only if you're a complete a-hole. OK, if you're mean to me and you're an a-hole. That's the only time I don't really accept you in this channel. It's the most simplest rule. And I say that in Discord as well, especially having to pick with this fight with this other person. If I see red flags, if I see anybody being mean to me and telling me to, you know, this and that and whatever, you know, calling me names. First off, I don't know you, bro. You don't disrespect me like that. OK, you don't come to this channel and disrespect me. You don't do that. You don't do that at all. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I don't mean to go full Italian, but you don't do that. You don't come to this and think you're like a big shot because it's mostly these little kids thinking they're so funny and stuff like that. First off, I wouldn't know if you're a little kid. You can be an older man, but still would be the same because a lot of times I wouldn't tell when you call me names, okay? I just want to really go in a tirade in that because a lot of times, the more people coming in, I have to be really strict. And I'm really thinking about that. I'm really thinking of actually putting up an update of telling, you know, some people that are subscribed to my channel that, yeah, I appreciate you being subscribed, you know, giving views, you know, loving the videos, loving the reads, showing love. That's cool. But the other people, you better watch yourself, okay? I'm not the type of person that you want to mess with. Okay, no, 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 come in here and be that guy all right just be nice that's it it's really not that hard in a community where it's all about romance and books and what in universe do you think you being gangster you being these streets and also being a romance community like what is that you look whack all right don't be like that just be nice just be nice you can be cool you can be a gangster and love romance that's me but you know what's the difference is that i'm nice i'm respectful adore Gosh. Anyway, sorry. I'm very angry in this freaking <laughs> Vince talk because of just the amount of emotions that I have right now for this beginning of this year. Let me tell you, my energy is up high. There is so many big things and excitement. And let me tell you, I got also a lot of emotions. Okay. 
But back to my point with the Telosa, the, the thing is that they're talking about like, you know, this diversity, this and that, and which I, that's cool. But at the same time, you go to anywhere in America, you go to anywhere in the US, freaking here, in some freaking some bum ghetto here in the US of A could be safer than that. Okay? And it's diverse. Oh, oh, so surprised. Like, seriously, what is the, <laughs> it, anywhere in America, and a lot of times, yes, there's some places, but there is a very, very little. There's a very, very little, especially when it comes down. It's like the same thing with a very, very little hate here and there, whatever channel you make. You know, yeah, there's some haters, but they're small. They're small, but the voices are loud. They're small. They're small. And especially when it comes down to a diverse city. Anywhere you go in freaking America, and it, it, this person talking about, oh, it's going to be diverse. What does that mean? Having all the cultures. Go to freaking New York. All the cultures are right there. You get to go like, you know, you know, it will be like one minute you're in India and the next minute you're in Dominican Republic. OK, and the other minute you're in freaking little Italy and the other minute you're in little Philippines. OK, you, I, I, what is this? I'm talking about diversity. Shoot. What is that supposed to mean when actually all these places are going to be expensive? Who's going to have the money to actually live in these places? OK, tell me that. All right. Let me tell you right now. I bet the house prices are going to be high once Tolosa is built. But I swear, I hate it when people actually, you know, takes the advantage of using the word diversity. You have to use more than that. You talk about diversity. Like, what do you mean by that? Oh, you know, we're talking about religions and, you know, like freedom of religion, freedom of like beliefs and, you know, freedom of this and that and, you know, you know all the cultures. But, but, but that's literally almost every single big city in America. I'm sorry. I don't know what that means. Everywhere you go is diverse. There is mean people, but you can't avoid that. The same way I can't avoid hate. I can't avoid that. No matter where I go, you got to understand when it comes down to actually, you know, really having quote unquote diversity, because I guess they're trying to make a city that is safer. What city isn't? Police is a real thing because it keeps people safe. Security. You know, like like just investigators and stuff like that. If you want your city safe, really understand what you're trying to build here. And I guess you're trying to make it expensive to actually have, you know, the bad people come out, you know, get out or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I just heard about this news of Tolosa and I don't really understand what's the point of them making a freaking 50 billion dollars. You know what? In earth, how about you solve poverty? How about you solve climate change? How about you solve this and that? Talking about you making a big city. Like, are you serious? Making how about you put that in charities? Okay, I'm I'm stop. <laughs> I am angry at this point. Anyways, I'm about to be happy Vince because you know why you deserve happy Vince. Be happy Vince because happy Vince is happy. Um gaming. Let's go into that. So uh, I heard a lot of things about Hogwarts Legacy, and I I couldn't care less because let me tell you, Hogwarts Legacy, look, I never cared about Harry Potter. Now, that game, was the Chamber of Secrets or something on the GameCube? Oh, that was a banger. I remember that. Oh, those were the times. But when it comes down to Hogwarts Legacy, and, you know, and also I like how people's opinions, there's a definitely just, especially how we're in this state where everybody's starting to actually be more understandable compared to 2020, if you know what I mean. Um, people are actually a bit more understandable of what they're, like, saying and stuff like that. Because we got major people, like, I remember the, I saw a video of the Black Hakage. And, you know, he's definitely a person that is very progressive. And he understands why people, you know, are canceling the, the Hogwarts legacy. But he said this, the same thing I'm going to say. P people, normal people, families, work hard to make this game. And it's only important that you buy it just to support them. Just to care because they have nothing to do about the whole J.K. Rowling thing. Me, I don't really like J.K. Rowling much, but I don't really cancel her. And like, what's the point? She don't care. <laughs> she don't care if this random person like just happens to cancel her. Like, the hell does she care? She doesn't know who I am. So, uh, other than that, what does have to like? What does like boycotting Hogwarts Legacy is gonna do for anything? It's gonna do for anything. Let's be honest. Nothing. Just nothing, okay? Even Greg Miller from Kind of Funny actually admits that. Yeah, nothing. We're still going to review the game. But also, he, he said something like, oh, we're also going to start a charity for, for helping trans people, which I'm like, okay, what's the point with that with the, with the game? But okay. <laughs> I mean, that's good. But, uh, you know, all because you're trying to be safe and stuff, I see that. 
I understand that. But at the same time, why? You could just do that for every other day. But hey, you know what? Do you? Uh, but yeah, Greg Miller is like, you know, something else that, that you know, a creator that I, I look up to, especially the whole entire kind of funny crew right there. And you know, I like how uh, Greg Miller is like, yeah, we're the wokest MMFers in the freaking platform. And I was like, man, they really, Greg Miller knows. I thought he was blind, but he knows. He knows. And I like it. These people are beginning to be more understanding. And I, that's what I like. I like every creator to be more understanding of what they're doing and what they stand for and stuff like that. Not everybody, you know, everything is gray. And I know there's some people like, what? No, no, no. You have to either be in this side or that side. How about no? How about I be gray? How about I support trans rights at the same time, actually not, you know, like liking to actually care about pronouns or wear a mask. I hate that. But I support trans people. I support, you know, like it just doesn't make sense why we have to be like all in the, you know, not in the gray side. Some of us are very, hu humans are complex. People are complex. And we got to understand that. Okay. Not every one of us is going to agree this and that and the other. My whole entire audience would not agree the same things I agree with. Not all of us like pineapple pizza, but that is busting. <laughs> Some people will throw up, but I like me some pineapple pizza. Just put it in my mouth. How oh, yummy. And you know what? If you don't like it, like, oh, it's disgusting. It tastes like trash. That's cool. That's cool. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. To be honest about your opinions and what you stand for, just be you. Be real. Okay? And also be real to understand that these are real people working on the game of Hogwarts Legacy. They do not deserve to be canceled. And I don't know if J.K. Rowling really cares because she gave money either way. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Um, <laughs> also, the same thing with Forspoken. Um, I've been hearing a lot of hate about that game. But at the same time, I'm like, like, you know, the whole dialogue is the problem. It's, you know, I don't know about the gameplay and stuff like that. I'm poor. I don't got no freaking PS5 or PS4, so I don't know how to play this game. I don't, got, I don't know how to play it. But I heard it's bad. So that's, you know, the thing. The thing is that what is up with games with certain... And this is the same thing with Velma, okay? But what is up with games with certain commentary trying to actually appeal to many people? Do you have... To, does everything have to be appealed? Appealed to this and that. Listen, any character can be in any movie, every, any show. It's just that when you have like a certain character and a bunch of characters that appeal to the American... And that's the word American, like, you know, uh, uh, like this and that and stuff like that. You know, I appreciate content from other countries. That's what I'm about. I feel like if it's Forspoken, if the character was British, I probably wouldn't hate her. If I gotta be honest, I, I feel like if they change her accent, it will be appeal. It will still be cringe. I'm going to be honest. But if you had like, you know, if she had like a, a British accent a, a French accent or a Jamaican accent or a, if, if she had a little Aussie, Aussie in her, I would actually like it. But with the American accent, I'm just like, okay, is, did this lady just, just came from my classroom like or something? Like, like Susie, what are you doing? <laughs> like you we were supposed to actually work on home ec. And you know what I mean? It's, it's just like, I don't, I don't get it. But also I, you know, at the same time with all the hate, I get I get that many people, especially for games being expensive nowadays, it's not getting a lot of love. I'm gonna be honest. It's the, from the looks of it, it's looking pretty bad. Um, but yeah, first spoken. I guess don't play it. Um also there's a bunch of layoffs, so a lot of big tech layoffs going on, which is kind of scary to see. And we're seeing Ubisoft layoffs, we're seeing massive tech layoffs. Like, we're seeing, like, especially Ubisoft and Microsoft and, you know, all these other softs and a lot of soft because I'm soft. Look at my belly. It's soft. <laughs> Not really. But you know what I mean. It, there's a lot of softs that is being freaking layoffs. You know what I mean? That's Ryan's bars. Boom, boom, boom. But it it's just seems like it's going on, like, back and forth. It happening a lot. I remember Netflix. What is it? Like, uh, well, actually, no, it was not layoffs, but it was something else that was crazy. I think Netflix had like a hundred million people banned from their server, which now thinking about it, I'm like, oh, crap. Am I freaking logged out from from Netflix? Is Netflix going to kick me out? They're going to kick me. Li listen, I haven't finished the whole One Piece series yet. I need Netflix. <laughs> OK, anyways. Um, also, another thing in gaming, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to RGT. 
84, 85, I think that's, listen, I just su subscribe to him. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't much of a fan, but from what he does and also the games, he, especially when he shared about his GameCube games and also share about Mario Odyssey, which I actually finished, which I'm so excited to talk about. Um, you know, I, I'm really hoping the best for RGT because he, he was sick. He had, you know, a certain cancer or a disease or something that, that happened to him in the hospital. So I'm praying for him. You know, it, it, it looks pretty bad. But I'll pray for him. It, it, I mean, you know, I kind of feel bad for, like, what he'd been through. So I just want to give you a shout-out and, like, say, like, oh, you know, hope you're feeling okay and stuff like that. You know, and especially how I'm very beginning to be fans of, like, you know, a fan of the, the Spawn Waves uh, squad. I'm hopefully all of them are okay. He almost died. Literally. Like, literally. RGT, like, this creator. It would have been another Etika. And you, if you know, you know. You know what happened when Etika passed away. That was so sad. That was hard to actually swallow. Like, I, I just couldn't believe that. So, I hope RGT is okay. I hope every gamer... Listen, I hope everyone's well. You know what I mean? I hope every, let, Let's just say that. I hope everyone is doing well. Anyways, I'm doing well, of course, as you can see. But, uh, animation, news. Let's go into it. Some people have been talking about Velma and this and that. I got a chance to watch it. I did a review of it. Hope you enjoy it. You're welcome. And, uh, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. But... I really, really tried my hardest to actually pretend like, you know what, this is a little bit of, you know, I, you know, like, because with the, the LGBT, like, you know, plus representation that it has, I thought that was going to carry it somewhat did. Like, I don't really, the Daphne and Velma relationship, there's no build up to it. And this is coming from a person that read a lot of like romances and stuff like that. So I don't really feel that connection between these two. Especially, I don't feel a connection of, like, Velma. I feel like, you know, especially how she's known to be the most hated, you know, uh, kind of, like, character right now at this moment. I don't know if there's any redeeming thoughts about it. And I tried to watch the episode, too, but, man, that was hard. What is that with that 420 joke? Uh, Norville. But, yeah, you know, Velma. I, 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 I saw it. And, again, especially with the forespoken conversation that I had a minute ago. What is up with these characters with this, like, like, I feel like there was a 30 or 40 someone that was writing the show. It was like, that's going to appeal to the Gen Z's. <sighs> okay. Uh, Ruby. Let's talk about Ruby because Ruby Volume 9 has been announced. It is coming at February 23rd. I am so hyped. I get to see all my favorite Ruby tubers actually reacting to the show, Murder Birds, Galaxian, and all these other creators, especially the ones I haven't seen in forever, ever since Volume 8. And follow, finally, Volume 9 is coming. How long has it been since we heard anything from Ruby? When Arrow fell, and I finished Arrow fell, I did a review of it. Ruby Arrow fell. I played that game for the sake of actually getting some Ruby content, and it was worth it. I really enjoyed Arrow fell. For the cutscenes. But man, the gameplay itself was hard and was not really that fulfilling or worth it, but anything like that. But at the same time, I really enjoyed it. I dig it. And I'm hoping that I would dig Ruby Volume 9. It's going to be exclusive to Crunchyroll. So, yo, what happened to the Rooster Teeth site? <laughs> what happened to the Rooster Teeth, you know, like, whatever happened to that? Huh? I guess it's gone. I guess Crunchyroll bought that. Crunchyroll dropped that mine like I bought that. Yeah, Crunchyroll mic. Crunch, crunch, crunchy roll, crunchy roll. Good job, yeah. Just have it on your, your service, I guess. I heard crunchy roll is not a good service. I'm gonna be honest, okay. But at the same time, you know what? You could have put it in Netflix. You could have put it anywhere else. But hey, crunchy roll. You know what? Hey, I'll, 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 I'll peep that. I'm looking forward to to Ruby uh, Volley Nine for sure. Just to hear the voices. And you know what? What I'm curious about, I'm really curious to hear the Ruby, Team Ruby, like, are they adults yet? They have to be at this point. You know, if this was real life, if they had real life age, Ru the Ruby team itself, like, how am I? Okay, like, last time we saw them, I think they were teenagers, like, back in, like, they were in their late teens in somewhere in Volume 9. Um, sorry, Volume 8, you know, in, like, you know, that whole situation and stuff like that, especially entering into a portal. No, I'm not, I'm not really allowed to give spoilers, but you know what I mean. But um, at this point, they're supposed to be like 23 or 22. They're supposed to be in their early 20s. I remember in my early 20s. Those were the moments, man. 
Oh, how much I would give that back. Anyways, um, hundred, uh, what is this? Oh, yeah, we're talking about the Netflix thing. But yeah, that's what's going on Ruby, and that's what's going on here and there, and all of that goodness, stuff like that, you know what I mean? I'm excited for Ruby, and I'm excited for Hasman Hotel. I'm excited for Arcane. There's going to be a lot of good shows. And I'm also excited to finish Sonic Prime. Where's the rest of the episodes? I'm, I really need to know what's going on with the pi pirate arc, okay? And also One Piece, I gotta finish that, speaking of pirates. Um... Thank you guys for watching. Hope you subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. Hope you enjoy my madness. Hope you enjoy this and that. I love talking. I love running my mouth. That's why I love to actually one day make this as a career, as a job, as something that I dream of doing. Let me tell you, I don't get, I get, I get almost zero, but I, at least I get you guys the love, and that's what's all is good. You know, that's that's the best thing that a man can get. All right, that. See you when I see you. One love and a peace.